afternoon. This is me, Ayman Yassin, and welcome to the new episode, uh, which is directed to the IGCSE candidates. In this episode, uh, I'm going to continue solving the, this past paper, paper 6, uh, February, March 2016. In the previous uh, episode, we have arrived at question number 3. So, uh, today I'm going to continue to solve Question three and uh, question four. Question three and question four. Uh, also, in this episode, I recommended all the AS uh, level candidates to watch this uh, episode because it's very important for them to solve the question number three also in the uh, practical exam, which is uh, testing for cations, anions, and uh, testing for gases. So here in this question, yes, we are going to test for cations, anions, and gases. Question three, you have two solids, L and M. Always in this exam, one of these uh, unknown compounds, uh, these uh, solids or these uh, compounds, one of them should be known and the other one could be unknown. Here, the solid L, it's known compound, which is uh, copper 2 chloride and solid M was a different salt that means here M it's unknown the test on the solids and some of the observation are shown so here we will start with the compound L your compound L which is copper chloride Describe the appearance of solid L. Put it in your mind. All, most of the compounds of copper, they are uh, blue, pale blue, uh, blue, or dark blue. So in this uh, question, to uh, answer it, the appearance of this solid, it's already solid. Or you can say blue. crystal. The appearance of copper chloride, it's a blue crystal. In the question B, you are going to dissolve this uh, copper chloride in a water, then you are going to shake it to uh, make sure all the solid is dissolved uh, completely. Then this solution was divided into four portions. You have four test tubes. One, two, three, and four test tubes. One, two, three, four. In four test tubes, and the following test carried out. In the test tube one, sorry, in the test tube one, drops of aqueous ammonia were added to the first portion of the solution. Excess ammonia solution was then added to the mixture and shaken. So here you have first of all added few drops of ammonium hydroxide or ammonia solution then you continue with excess ammonia solution. So here you need to write two observations. The observation uh, for IGCSE level you need to memorize this observation from your table but for AS level uh, candidates already you will have this table uh, which is attached at the end of your uh, practical exam. So ammonia with ammonia always ammonia solution AQ is testing for positive ion so what do you have where is the positive ion positive ion which is copper positive 2 so copper positive 2 with ammonia if it's a few drops you will have blue <coughs> precipitate but in excess, you have then excess of ammonia hydroxide. You will uh, observe another thing, which is this blue precipitate. It will be dark or deep blue, dark blue. And this precipitate, it will be dissolved. That means you will uh, observe dark blue. solution these things 
for IGCSE they have to memorize them and AS level they uh, just they will uh, do this experiment then they will compare the observation with the table that they have it then another experiment for the second portion the second test tube here you have used uh, sodium hydroxide all sodium hydroxide solution also is used testing for cations here the cations which is copper positive 2 here you need to uh, write the observation only for excess ammonia so here a few drops of sodium hydroxide you don't need to say what's happened here uh, you will get blue precipitate with excess of sodium hydroxide In the question 3, triple I, here dilute nitric acid was added to the third portion of the solution followed with silver, silver nitrate. Silver, it's testing for halide, for X. So which halide you have it in your compound? It's chloride. So silver nitrate with the chloride will give us white precipitate because you have chloride ion according to this equation silver nitrate plus your halide sorry it's chloride you can say copper chloride you will form silver chloride plus copper nitrate this one two mole this one two mole this one it's white precipitate <coughs> white precipitate okay uh, the equation in uh, some of uh, exams uh, they are asking actually about sorry they are asking about the uh, write the chemical equation okay so it's very important to know what's the reaction between the silver and chloride okay uh, then in the next question you have dilute nitric acid was added to the fourth portion of the solution followed by aqueous barium nitrate here barium always is testing for sulfate do you have sulfate in your compound no we have copper chloride we don't have copper sulfate so here no reaction or no precipitate that's all so your compound you have tested for it you have uh, get the blue precipitate with sodium hydroxide that means you have copper ion and you have uh, white precipitate with silver nitrate it's uh, because that means because you have chloride uh, here just I want to explain something always when we will start to test for the negative ions we are adding nitric acid nitric acid why this uh, this uh, nitric acid will prevent any uh, interaction between the impurities may uh, you may find them in the in your sample with these reagents that means which reagent that means the silver nitrate and barium nitrate so in your compound if there is another impurities these impurities they will not interact with the silver nitrate or barium nitrate so only your reaction it will be between your negative ion and uh, these reagents so in uh, some of the past papers they are asking why we are adding nitric acid before uh, starting the testing for uh, negative ions so nitric acid to remove the impurities <clears throat> in the second part of the same question here you are going to test for solid M we don't have any idea about solid M what's the name or the, the name but we have the observation of different tests are uh, applied on this uh, solution so test on solid M the appearance is solid that means it's salt white crystal white crystal that means here you don't have transition element white because 
transition element we don't have so maybe this compounds group number one group number two uh, or uh, group number three or ammonium the solid was heated and gas given off was tested with damp red red litmus paper okay this sublimate sublimate formed on the sides of the test tubes that means here you have some gases are given off then it's condensed on the uh, upper part of the test tube then red litmus paper it's to blue that means which gas is given off it's ammonia so your compound contains ammonium ion in the solid M was dissolved in water to form a solution then aqueous sodium hydroxide was added to the solution and the mixture heated the gas given off was tested Fungid gas evolved, that means this one ammonia gas again. And the pH paper showed pH tw uh, 10 more than 7, that means here again it's ammonia ion we have. That means with the sodium hydroxide you have formed ammonium hydroxide. So the first part of this uh, compound we have. Uh, did, uh, identified which is ammonium ion what's the negative ion here you have added again nitric acid with silver nitrate silver nitrate is testing for halides what's that it's yellow that means it's uh, sorry yellow it's mean iodide so your compound it's ammonium iodide <coughs> In the question 4, which is related with uh, chromatography actually, here the label on a bottle of orange drink stated contains no artificial colors. It's original. A scientist thought that the orange color in the drink was a mixture of two artificial colors these artificial colors plan an investigation to show that the orange color in the drink didn't contain these two colors you are provided with sample of E110 and E129 and the orange coloring from the drink so that means you have three uh, different samples here you have uh, this uh, this coloring and uh, a sample from uh, the orange drink you are also provided with common laboratory apparatus now the orange drink which is dissolved in a water and if there is artificial colors also they are dissolved in a water so you have here a mixture of different compounds all of them are dissolved in water but their solubility are different so at once you need to think about which separation technique which is used to separate uh, a mixture of compounds are dissolved in a water so at once you need to think about chromo to <coughs> Sorry for that. Chromatography. First of all, you need to prepare this chromatography paper. Okay, this is before we can say. Then so please uh, follow these steps you have chromatograph paper then you need to draw a line this line should be by pencil 
Why should be in a pencil? The baseline because uh, pencil is insoluble in most of the solvents, so you will avoid uh, mixing the mixture with a pencil. Okay, so always it's drawn by a pencil. Then you have three different uh, samples. You have orange color, and you have these two E's, the artificial colors. So we can say here E1, this is E2, and here we have sample. Then you need to provide a beaker which is fed to this paper. It's filled with the water, solvent, water it will be a solvent then you will transfer or you will uh, take this paper to put it where inside this one and you need to make sure the baseline and the level of water the level of water should be lower than the baseline which is uh, drawn on the uh, uh, chromatograph paper so here we have this first stop uh, this uh, sample here we have E1 and here you have E2. So this S, we need to make sure that this S doesn't contain E1 and E2. So when the water will dissolve these samples, they will go up as the solvent going up uh, because this paper will absorb the water. So here the sample of orange, maybe it will be dissolved with water and it, it will be arrived here. And the E1 could be here, and the E2 could be here. Now, we need to check this sample contains any spot which is equivalent to this E. Now, so here this sample doesn't contain E2. And the, again, this sample contains E1. There is a spot which is, is the same distance or the same level of the E1. No. So, we have uh, made sure that S doesn't contain E1 and E2. But how you need, uh, how you are going to present these results? The result, it will be presented by using these values, which is RF. Now, let's consider the distance between the solvent front and the baseline, it's 10 centimeters. What's the distance of sample S, which is traveled? We can say it's nine. So nine over 10, so you have equal 0.9. This one for orange drink, we call it S. What's the RF of E1? RF of E1, which is approximately we can say it's four or five five over ten so the rf it's 0 0.5 and the rf for e2 equal it's uh, we, we can say it's seven seven over ten point seven so your sample which is orange drink uh, doesn't contain any spot uh, has RF 0.5 or 0.7 that means yes this orange drink doesn't contain any artificial color so we have made sure by using what which uh, separation technique chromatography so by the end of this uh, episode we have completed this past paper uh, and uh, see you in the next episode with a new past paper with the new question See you again.